Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory be to God this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcoming you as you join us at Kingdom Dominion Church International. I'm honored to be here today. I'm honored to be with you in the presence of the Lord. I am Apostle Dr. Victoria Scott, and it is such an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning. I want to say, extend a warm thank you to our uh, dynamic hosts this morning, Reverend Cornelius and Reverend Margaret Masua. You are a blessing to the kingdom. You are a blessing to the earth. I thank God for you and all that you are doing in the earth. I thank God for the work that you are doing in Boston, Massachusetts, and the lives that you are touching there and also around the world. Friends, as you're joining me today, please share the video with somebody else. Invite them into the house of the Lord so that we can go ahead and hear what saith the Lord this morning. It's so good to see you all. It's so good to have you joining us today. Please let me know if the music is too loud in the background. Um, I usually like to have music playing as I'm hearing what the Lord is saying. Music is always playing in heaven except for moments of silence, but it is always there. Uh, before we continue, um, let me go ahead and open up in a word of prayer and we will get into the word of the Lord. Father, this morning we bless you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, God. We thank you for your mercies that are new today. God, we thank you that, Lord, you woke us up today. Father, that you uh, woke us up in our right mind, God. You woke us up whole in you. You woke us up sound in you, God. And that whatever obstacles um, have been coming our way are going to come our way, we thank you that, God, you always raise up a standard, which is the power of your your blood, which is your name, oh God, which is your word that is always fighting for us, God, that you are in control. Father, we bless you today. We give you glory and thanks, Heavenly Father, for what you're doing in our lives, for the miracles that you're working out, God, the situations, Heavenly Father, that seem impossible, God, that you're straightening out, God, the doors that you're opening, the dreams that you're birthing, the purposes that you're bringing forth. God, we thank you for the supernatural things that you're doing in our lives, God, for the yes and, and, and the amen to the promises that you have spoken over us. Father, we give you glory and honor. We magnify you. We worship you, God, for what you're doing in this hour, what you're doing in this season. God, what you're doing in our lifetime, your name be praised, God, your name be glorified, your name be lifted up high. Oh God, wherever we are, Lord, we raise up the banner that our God is Elohim, that our God is the champion, that our God is the victor, that our God is Lord of Lords, that our God is victorious. Wherever we are in the world, God, we raise up a banner that here lives the ambassadors of change. Here lives people whose, <coughs> whose God is the Lord. Father, we bless your name this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever part of the world we are in. Father, we glorify you. We thank you that you are our rock. We thank you that you are our God. In the midst of all that's happening around uh, the world, in our individual lives or on national levels, God, you are in control. You are reigning. You are ruling. So mighty God, even this time we dedicate it to you, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. Come and invade our space. Come and invade our territory, God. And Lord, we pray that we would be conduits of your glory. Heavenly Father, as we receive instructions from the throne room of God, of thus saith the Lord. We clear our minds. We clear our hearts, God. We are here to hear from you, to receive, to sup at your feet, oh God, for you to fill us. Heavenly Father, there's so many things out there that are trying to fill us. But God, you are the one who fills us. You are the one who fills us to overflow. So we bless your name this morning and we thank you 
for your goodness. We thank you for your power. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And the people of God say, amen and amen. It's good to see you. Good to have all of you here uh, joining me on this amazing uh, Sunday morning. Thank you again, Reverend uh, Cornelius, Reverend Margaret Masu. I love you guys. I, I appreciate you. I honor you. I salute you for all that you're doing for the kingdom. God bless you. May he uh, uh, just put even more quickness on your, on your feet and more suddenly in your hands and upon your head in the name of Jesus. May all that you touch prosper. Those who are in your household and in your house of faith. I want to thank all of you again for tuning in. Please share the video. We are going to dive into the word for thus saith the Lord. You know, there is so much that's happening around the world. So much that's happening in our personal lives. And I just want to thank God that he is in control. I want to send out also a quick shout out to my husband and my children. Pastor Will Scott, love you so much. Love you, my kids. They are dynamic uh, and allowing me to do what I need to do for the kingdom. You know, uh, when I when I look around and I just still my heart with God, what is it that you are saying? What is it that you are doing? God, what is it that you are uh, uh, doing in this hour? I have to still myself from all the noise. There's so much noise, isn't there? There's so many waves out there of what is going on. I'm reminded of Peter whenever he sees Jesus walking on the storm. Uh, Peter says to Jesus, I will, if you bid me come, I will, I will step on the water. I will, I will walk on this thing with you. And Jesus says to him, bid me, uh, he, Jesus says to him, come. And he climbs out the boat and he begins to walk on the water. The moment that he begins to look at the storms, the moment he begins to look at the waves, the moment he begins to look at who's winning the election, well, the moment he begins to look at coronavirus, the moment he begins to look at a loss of a job, the moment that he begins to look at uh, uh, the lack, at the moment that he begins to look at a lockdown, the moment that he begins to look at where's the, where's the money coming for this, what happens? He begins to sink. The way that we are going to walk above this storm, we have to be people who are going to keep our eyes on Jesus. Never is there a time like uh, uh, as such as now where we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. On one occasion, you see Jesus wa uh, telling the, the storm to, to be still. He rebukes it and tells it to be still. Let me move down just a little bit. But this time you see Jesus walking on the water. Why? Because he's showing them, I'm the king of the flood. I can rebuke the storm and tell it to be quiet, but I'm also the God of authority. I'm also the God of dominion. And I know how to walk over situations. I know how to have them under my feet. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what obstacle is there. I don't know what challenge has come up. Maybe you don't know how things are going to be a month from now. Maybe you don't know how things are going to turn out three months from now. And there is God. There's something in you that's saying, God, what are we going to do? I want you to take the position of Peter. And I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus and to say to him in this hour, God, if you permit me, if you bid me, if you ask me, I will come. I will step out of the boat. I will step out of the place of comfort. I'm not going to look at the storms. I'm not going to look at all the waves that are coming in around me because they're real and they're threatening and they're loud. Can you imagine for a fisherman to be terrified of waves? There must have been some incredible waves. It must have been really serious. So I'm not here to downplay and say, you know, oh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. And then I'm not here to downplay the gravity of, of, of your situations. I'm not here to, to downplay how serious of a predicament you might be in or you might be facing. I'm not here to downplay the, how huge the decision is. But I'm here to remind you how big your Jesus is. And I'm reminding you to keep your eyes focused on him that as you step out, that you're, that as you're looking out, you're not going, oh my God, and this and this and this. All that Peter had to do was keep his eyes on Jesus. 
And when he kept his eyes on Jesus, the supernatural began to happen. What does that mean? It, mean? it means that biology, chemistry, and physics began to bow to the feet of Peter. Come on. Because I'm telling you, science will tell you that when you step on water, you're supposed to sink. You're supposed to go in. But when you keep your eyes on Jesus, the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology, the laws of science begin to bow their, their, uh, their laws to you. And he began to walk towards Jesus because he was seeing what the word could do. I want to challenge us today. What does, what is the word showing you? If Jesus was here as the living word, what would he do with a year that has been multiplied and that has been over flooded with sorrow, over flooded with COVID and viruses, over flooded with inconveniences, over flooded with chaos. What would Jesus do with your 2020? Would, it, would he allow it to be the storm that kept him on the shore? Or would he use it as an opportunity to show how supernatural he is? Would it be an, a, 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 a year that he would use and say, I'm going to use this year to turn some things around. I'm going to use this year, come on, to let the supernatural flow. I'm going to use this year to be the year that I do some big things. Jesus was walking on the storm. The very thing that kept them terrified was the very thing that he was walking over. I want us to remember that we are here to be a difference. We got to change our lingo and our conversation from those who are around us. The remnant has to rise in such an hour as this because you have been called to make a change. Not when things are smooth sailing. Not because things, uh, 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 when the sun is out and it's shining and it's a nice day for a walk in the park. Anybody can show up on those days. But it takes a bad mama jamma. It takes a bad somebody to show up in the storm. It takes a bad somebody to show up in the rain. It takes a bad somebody to show up in 2020 and say, this is the year that victory lives. This is the year I'm going to accomplish the most. This is the year I'm going to succeed. This is the year I'm going to do exploits for God. Proverbs 31. I'm going to be talking today about the ambassadors that God has called us to be. And I want to just say a shout out to everybody who's on here. I see Kingdom Dominion Church. Love you so much. Uh, uh, Pastor John Walia, God bless you. Man of God. Sister Tamara, love you. Uh, uh, my queen sister, my prophet, Apostle Maples. I love you, woman of God. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm reading out of Proverbs 31. And this is a chapter that we know very, very well. But I came here today to come and remind the bride of who she is. I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and it says, uh, uh, Proverbs, it's Proverbs 31, verse 10. It says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So she will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her fruit from her farm. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. She considers a field and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. And her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he is sitting among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor her are her clothing. She will rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. 
She watches over the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Church of the Living God, I have the honor and the privilege today to share my apologies about this, to share with you the heart of the Lord. There we go. My apologies. Let's get this straightened out. Hallelujah. Sorry for the technical difficulties. There we go. There we go. Here is a woman that we have read over and over. And when she's representing, uh, or rather what she's representing for us in this hour is so powerful. I said earlier that we have been sent into the earth to be ambassadors. We have come here. Remember we were told that we are in this world, but we are not of it. So that right there must let us know that our involvement in the earth has got a specific purpose. Our involvement in the earth has an assignment attached to it. So when we get, when we are here and living in this body, we have come as representatives from heaven on assignment. We are now this new creature. In fact, brother Solomon puts it for us this way, where he has all the wisdom that a man could want. And he takes the time to explore the different, uh, things in this world that are uh, today shoved in our faces to say this is fulfilling this is success this will bring you happiness and all of this brother Solomon makes it so easy for us because he says I'm, a, I'm going to spare you the time to help you stay focused on your assignment out of the book of Ecclesiastes when you read it at first glance you go well what's the point but hidden in all of that is a, a secret that Solomon is telling us in order for you to keep your eyes on Jesus, in order for you to remember that you're an ambassador, in order for you to keep your eyes on the mission, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of things that are, that are going to help you, uh, stay focused so that you don't go chasing after these things for you to feel that these things are necessary so that you're taking your eyes off of the assignment because truth be told when you are in this physical body it is very easy to get caught up in what's going on why because you have feelings you have emotions you are a human being it is easy to get carried away with, oh my gosh, who's winning the election? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Not saying those things are not important. But church, we are on assignment. So brother Solomon sits down like the good big brother that he is and he begins to tell you, you're going to do this. Let me tell you, it's empty. It's vain. You're going to try that. He says, I went after everything that my heart desired. Anything that it wanted, I, I had it, I, I got it. But let me tell you, the world will tell you this is success. That is success. And he says, I went after those things and guess what? I found out they were empty. They're not going to bring you the happiness that, that, you, that you're desiring. They're not going to bring you the safety net that you desire. He says these two things, only two things. If you read the whole book, he says only two things will bring you satisfaction. He says, enjoying the fruit of your labor, which is Sabbath, which is what the Proverbs 31 does. Let the fruit of her hands, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her. 
What you will find fulfilling is when you enjoy the fruit of your labor. And he says, and the other thing, a life that is dedicated to serving God. He says, these are the only two things that will bring you satisfaction. Everything else, you're going to do it, but I promise you, the fulfillment that when you are taking your last breath and can you, when you can honestly say, I have run the race, for you to feel that from your core. He says, all of these other things are not going to bring that. But these two things, if you work hard, take the time to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Take the time to enjoy how hard you've worked. Take the time to produce some fruit and take the time to live a life that honors God. So why am I bringing that in? And how does that tie in to this verse that I've, re- that I've shared about the Proverbs 31 woman? When you look at this couple, a lot of times we, we, you know, you've had those in the church that kind of, you know, when they get to this place, they kind of skip over it because it's like, ah, can't do that, can't attain that. I don't even know if this kind of woman exists. So they kind of skip over her. You've got those who are intimidated by their, her. And then you've also got the other half, which is like, man, she inspires me. They're those who are intimidated and those who are inspired by her. Because she's an example, a shining example of what a home should look like, what a couple should look like, what a man should be like, what a woman should be like. I grew up as one of those people who was inspired by her because I was raised by a Proverbs 31 woman, Evangelist Margaret Chapoloko. Show us some love on here. So for me, this woman was one that always inspired me. And I know that there are other Proverbs 31 women on here. Shout out to my sister, Reverend Margaret Masua, and other ladies who are on here who are really, I mean, Proverbs 31 women, uh, 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 Bishop Sh- Sharon uh, 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 Chiwungo, all the way from South Africa. These are, these are women I've surrounded myself with who are Proverbs 31 women. Prophet, Prophet Diane Maples, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 31 women. So when I look at her, she inspires me. But also on a grander scale, this woman represents the church. And her husband being King Jesus, who sits at the gates. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. I hope you can see me trying to pace myself. But... Even though it's, she can represent one woman. But I also want to remind the church today that she's here to represent you. If we are going to make a difference in this world. There are two places that the church of the living God has to be involved. It is not a negotiation we have to roll up our sleeves and we've got to get to work whenever you look at anybody who made a difference in the bible why is the story centered around that person because they were the ones who were making the difference there are really only two kings that were in position that the Bible talks about that made a significant difference. Only two. But from the book of Genesis all the way to Revelation are filled with stories of people who understood that they are the bride of Christ and they are here to make a difference one king was king david and the other is king jesus come on somebody king david king jesus the only two kings that when they sit in their throne made a huge impacting difference to the world read your bible again I'm not saying God didn't use kings. I'm not saying God didn't use leadership. I'm saying that church, you have a bigger role to play 
than you realize. And I've come today to come and tell the bride, put your veil on, sweetheart. Get your shoes on. Get your bouquet on. It's time for you to make your entrance into the world because you have got an assignment seated by the king of glory to rule in the earth and to make a difference. Two places that we must take possession of. Two places that if we're going to make a difference in society, we have to take possession of these. Throughout the New Testament, when the apostles are teaching the church, you see them talking about relationships, how you carry yourself in the home, how you carry yourself amongst your people, how you deal in business, how you handle yourself in your everyday life. They're teaching and training. This woman, when you see her, she is intimidating to some because she makes you realize how much work goes into a home. A housewife is not at home sitting down eating bonbons with her feet up watching Christmas movies from the day from the day from daybreak till dusk. Any housewife or house dad who stays home will tell you there's always something to do. They don't stay idle because they are at home. They get to work. She intimidates people because they start to realize that being this kind of virtuous wife requires a lot more than what's for dinner. She treats her home like she is, like it is her canvas. And she's raising a generation and raising a nation. Yeah, she'll keep her house clean and make sure that there's dinner. But she's a businesswoman, meaning she's using her mind. Meaning that she's creative. Meaning that she's not lazy when she gets up. Meaning that she's a woman of influence and power because or position because she even pays people to work with her. She sits there and she clothes and she doesn't just, she doesn't just give them any kind of clothes. She gives them expensive clothing, purple and silk and gold are the things that she uses. She's, she is, she's, oh my goodness. She, she is a a force to be reckoned with because it says she supplies sashes to the merchants. Meaning that she's the one who gets the material, come on, that they're using in Milan and Paris and, and New York for, the, for, for, um, for, the, uh, uh, for their fashion events. It's her fabric that you're seeing on the catwalk. When she opens her mouth, she's speaking wisdom to her household, to her neighbors. She's extending her hands to the poor, which means that she's not only taking care of her home, she's looking around. She's not just driving by in her neighborhood. She's looking around and she's seeing who are the people who are, who are struggling? Who are those who I need? And this poor is not just those who don't have. Anybody who's lacking and I have the capacity to increase them, who I, my eyes are open. Out of her tongue comes kindness. She's not judgmental. She speaks from a place of kindness. Even if she knows the truth, she rebukes in kindness. Where am I going with this? Her husband is sitting at the gates with the elders. Church, if we are going to make a difference in this hour, anything significant, here are the two places that we have to take possession of. We have to take possession of the home. Society has a nucleus called the home. Whatever you teach in your home, that's what people do out there. My mama always used to say charity begins at home. 
I like another phrase that out, that's out there that says, if you want to save the world, start by making your bed. Start by brushing your teeth. If you want to do anything big out there in the world, what are the people who live with you saying about you? My God. Take possession of the home. This is the nucleus of society. If the home is where people are taught to love, the home is where people are taught to hate. The home is where people's mind frames are taught. There's a, there's a saying in, in my language that says, if you never travel, you will think that your mother is the best cook. So what does the mother normally do? My child, go out there and go and, invest and try out others and, and, and see the world. In you going to see the world, you're going to learn other things. But the child has to learn and get that okay from the mother. That's why you see in history there are certain tribes or certain uh, uh, um, communities or cultures that would, when you came of age, they sent you out to learn more of the world so you understood that the principles that you were learning at home are extended out there, but you get to build on what you've been taught. This is why when you look at the epistles, Paul is teaching them, husbands, treat your wives like this. Wives, treat your husbands like, uh, uh, husbands, treat your wives like this. Husbands, teach your wives like this. Children, this is how you interact with your parents. Parents, this is how you interact with your, chi with your children. Friends, this is how you, you operate with one another. This is why sometimes when there are issues, I look at, mm -hmm, you know, I get it now, being older, what my mama used to say. How were they raised? How do we take possession of the homes? In our ministries, we are teaching homes. We are teaching men. We are teaching women. We are teaching children. We are shaping culture. Influence the home. Your friends, the relationships that we have. That's right. I love that. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Linda. The home is the place where we teach value. The home is the place where we teach identity. The home is the place where we teach purpose. I'm asking every parent out there. The moment your child is 12, if you've got young kids, follow the Hebrew way of, the, of what should be done. In Hebrew, in the Hebrew culture, you know why they have bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah when they're 12? You're letting them know. These teenage years you're about to go into. Instead of you being rambunctious with your hormones, we're going to take your, we're going to give your fire and your energy a direction in which it should focus on. This is why Jesus, there were key points you found out about his life. When he was 12 years old, what did he say? I am about my father's business. Woo, come on somebody. You know, that was good. When they're 12 years old, they're growing up as teenagers knowing, I have been called to do this. When he was 12 years old, he made it known. Yes, I'm going to work in my father's house as a carpenter, but I also want you to know, I know what my purpose is. That was in his father's house. That was in the home. They will know that we belong to God by the way we love one another. That love is not just this cozy, lovey-dovey feeling. Love inclu includes purpose. It includes direction. Come on, it includes guidance. Woo, come on. It includes destiny. We've got to take possession of the home. The parents that you come in contact with. We got to speak life into each other because when we know that life is coming into each one of us. Guess what we're going to take with that light and power? We're going to turn it around. And we're going to go to our children. And we're going to tell them respect. I was taught to respect my leaders. I was told to respect my elders. 
that was drilled into me. So much so that if I went to complain about a teacher, I was not allowed to call them stupid. I was not allowed to call them idiotic. Even if they weren't there, my parents would say, you do not talk about adults that way. My husband and I were telling our kids, everybody else around you might be insulting the president. You don't do that in this house. Why? Because we're teaching them society. We're shaping them. We're shaping society. Teach your kids. We don't talk like that in this house. That's racist. Woo! We don't, we don't, we don't say I can't. We don't put limitations on ourselves. Imagine if homes, you know, and I know you as the remnant, these are things you're doing in your homes. But can you just imagine if the church of the living God caught this? If the church of the living God caught how powerful they can be. Listen to the Proverbs 31 woman. If the church said, I'm going to get up early and prepare for the people who help me. What does that mean? Church, we have to stop being the last ones to get any kind of information all the time. We are connected to the frequency of Holy Spirit. We are connect we flow in the frequency of Holy Spirit. We are connected to heaven. Is there not a prophet among us? Who knows what the spirit of the Lord is saying? Not what like, listen, out there they're going to do what they do, but is there not within the household of God somebody who knows they, uh, uh, Daniel knew years ahead of his time that Alexander the Great was coming that the Romans were coming John has seen the end that we are wondering every year people, people were joking if 2020 was the apocalypse they're looking through revelation like yep the locusts are here yep what's next <laughs> John had seen all these things which prophet is coming up in this hour to say the Lord has shown me 500 years from now come on somebody the Lord has shown me 10 years from now the Lord has shown me uh, 20 years from now the Lord has given me an idea that belongs 1000 years from now where are we remnant she rises up early which means we are way ahead of the world we have risen up and we know what is to come we're not blinking be it Biden, be it Trump, the church is already in position and aware that we have an assignment to do. Come on, somebody. Don't get so emotionally invested that you're forgetting who you are and what you were called to be. Change. She seeks wool and flax. She's not picking these things for... Okay, now that it's cold, she's getting ready and in position. Church, we are tapped into Holy Spirit. We already need to know what next year's weather needs to be like so we can start stocking up. The church, there were prophets this year saying there's a second wave of Corona. You shunned them because you thought they were speaking ill. And yet they're trying to say, prepare, get your households ready. There's a second wave of this thing that's coming. No, what did, we, what did the church want? No, rebuke it. No, the will of God is at work. You don't twist God's will. You, you allow it. So if the prophets say, get things in order for the second wave of disaster that's coming, don't look at them like they're crazy. Follow what they're saying. That is her getting ready ahead of time. She is like the merchant ship that brings food from afar. Come on. Oh my God. I, 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 the, 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 the Joseph anointing is in the atmosphere. 
Meaning that there could be a famine that's going on. But the Josephs have been risen in this hour to make sure that there's more than enough. That where there's lack, Josephs in business, Josephs in, 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 in education, Josephs in government, Josephs in media. They're being raised up to make sure that where lack is there present and what and, 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 and that Goshen is the place where the people of God have more than enough. Woo! The church. We need to profit from our vineyard. Come on church, we've got land. They're killing our bodies with all of these pesticides and things that they're putting on there. How about we start to buy land and start to grow our own food? Supply it to churches. Income right there. When this starts working, there's no reason for any of us to be broke. Because we are her. My mom preached this morning on our prayer line that Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 has been laid out for us. Are we going to fold our arms and just wait or are we going to take advantage of it that my hands are blessed? What are we doing to make sure that our merchandise is good? What are we going to make sure the lamp doesn't go out by night? Meaning she's not lazy. It might be night and the world might be sleeping. But we are up. We are praying. Some of us will say, we'll take, we'll take this half of the year and we're going to be on the prayer watch at midnight because that's when certain altars are exposed. But today, if you tell, n- n- not the remnant, if you tell the church, stop eating for one day and don't drink anything for one day, they start going into a convulsion and saying, no, I've got medical needs. Yes, but you're putting Burger King into your body, which has, w- will do you more harm, where fasting will break whatever's wrong with you. Woo! <laughs> Church of the living God, our lamp should not go out by night. That's when these altars pop up. That's when we gotta be up tearing them down. Bible says she's not afraid of the snow. It means that there are physical seasons, physical things that will come. When we were, when we were in Georgia, uh, we had a snowstorm. And the environment was not ready for that, kind of, that amount of snow. So what happened? When the snow fell on the trees, the trees were not... They're, 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 they're not the kind of trees in that area to support that weight of snow. So they began to fall on the power lines. So there's, so when the Bible says this, it's saying that weather changes come with a lot of challenges. But this woman, she's not intimidated by the atmosphere. Because she lives with rules from a different dimension. So those who were ready that year and had their food stocked up and had uh, extra water and had wood stoves and they were good. The church has to be at that place where we are not tossed to and fro. Oh my gosh, who's winning the elections? We are, we're, oh my gosh, a corona. Oh, and we're just, you know, tossed to and fro. When we're in God, remember what Solomon said. Take your eyes off of all of these things right here. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your assignment is to make sure that you are ready. Be ready. There's no time. I, 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 I love one of our generals, what he used to say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay. And I'm coming this season to say, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Come on, somebody. We are in the season of be ready. And as she's doing all of this, it might look like, but where's her husband? 
And it might not look like he's doing anything important. But when you actually study where he is, this is absolutely detrimental that he's here. When the Bible says in, in, this, in this chapter that his heart is with her. My father taught me a true man, a true man, his heart is with his family. His heart is with his home. He will do whatever it takes to make sure that his family is provided for, that his wife is taken care of, and his children are safe. He will build them a home. He will work two, three jobs if that's what it takes to feed them. So you can tell his number one priority is to be with his family, is to make life better for them. So while the atmosphere of the home is growing, he goes to the place where he can make a difference for his family. And he goes to the gates where the elders are. The gates were significant because this is where the laws were made. This is where wisdom was discussed. Remember, he who wants to be wise must surround himself with wise people. So the wisdom he's gaining, he's bringing it to his home. He's saying, hey, honey, listen, I found out today that there is a, a, a better place where you can, where we can take, you know, the tapestry that you're making. I found out that there is a better place, a better this, a better that. Take them there. He's in a place where he's gaining wisdom to grow his family. But also even more importantly, this is also where the laws were made. Church, if we are going to make a difference, get involved, half, some, whatever the number, but we got to get involved. Get into the places where people are passing laws. Sit at the gates. You know, we got to be gatekeepers. What's a gatekeeper? The gatekeeper is the one who allows certain, they sit at the gates and they watch what comes in and who goes out. They stand watch. Gatekeeper spiritually in your territory, you got to tell Leviathan, Python and all of them, you don't come in this area. You are not allowed over here. Whatever city you are in, what spiritual forces of darkness are attacking that area? You got to be a gatekeeper in your city. That's why you're there. On the more physical side, there are those of you who are uh, uh, called to places of government where you can make a change. Get in there with the city council. Get in there with the senators. Get in there with us governors. Get in there into the, the White House. Get in there into state house. Get in there into the palace. Get in there. Even if it's four of you, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. They were, I'm telling you, study Nebuchadnezzar. Read up on history on this man. Our lifetime has never seen a bad president. Even the president of North Korea looks like a kindergarten sandbox bully compared to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar would rip babies out of the stomachs of pregnant women. And yet God said, this is my servant because he's going to serve a purpose to teach Israel a lesson. That's why I say careful on who you're putting your mouth on or who's on leadership. You don't know how God is using them. God is more in control than we realize. Oh, that's a lesson for another day. But be a gatekeeper. It means that when Daniel was in there, Nebuchadnezzar was behaving. Look at King Ahab, the worst king Israel ever had. Yet Elijah was there. Making a difference, calling down fire from heaven, fighting him and Jezebel. It's not enough for us every four years, every five years. That's when we want to shout and say, I'm against abortion. What are you doing in between the elections that's making a difference? 
What are you doing in between those five years, those four years? Show me what you're doing. That's what God has come to tell the church. Put your veil back on. Take your sword and get to work. Be at the gates when they're passing laws against gender issues. Get there. That's where this man was. We got to own the gates. And we have the verse for it. Isaiah, I'm going to be closing very soon. Isaiah chapter 2 says this. That Zion will now become the highest mountain. Which means above all the seven mountains... From, from business, government, to religion, and all of these other things. Zion, who have the loudest voice. We're going to get involved. We are going to change our homes. And we're going to get into places of government. We're going to get into places where we can change the laws. You don't like what the police are doing? Get involved. Get into that place where you can make a difference. And help the laws get made. Get into that place where you're, where, 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 where you are uh, in, uh, um, uh, at the gates with the officials. Let your voice be heard. Run for office if you can. If you're in Zambia, become an MP. Make a difference. We got to get involved, church. These two places, we got to be gatekeepers and we got to be homekeepers. Somebody write that for me. We got to be gatekeepers and we have to be homekeepers. What is coming out of the home, what is being discussed at the gate is what is shaping society. If we can get into these homes and find out, you know, with some of these issues that people are going through, We have this book that's loaded with so much information of how we can help, you know, these people struggling with homosexuality. The Bible shows you how to deal with that. Which homes have we ministered to while the laws are being protected about it or being shaped around it? Who have we delivered church from the strongholds? Who have we delivered from bondages? Where is the the, the, the church that when we show up where there's bondage and we begin to worship that the chains begin to fall like they did for Silas and Paul Where is the church that they can sense in their spirit that something is off and they turn around like Paul and they say, that spirit that is within you is not right. I cast it out. Where, 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 church, this is the time. I know that this is what the is what the remnant has been doing. But God is calling for a church that is rising up in this hour that is full of power and life, that is full of resurrection, victory. That when they speak, homosexuals are, are being loosed from that bondage. Transgenders are being loosed from that bondage. Those who want to have abortions are being set free in Jesus that drugs, the spirit of drugs is is, is leaving that eyes are being opened, that sicknesses are fleeing, revival is coming to the church of the living God where there's fire and there's power and when we speak we make a difference you might have different people in places but the God who lives within us is reigning in this hour. This is who we are. Where we are, we make a difference. Homes are changing. Lives are changing. We are taking our cities by storm. We are taking our towns by storm. We are taking our states by storm. We are taking America by storm. We 
are taking Zambia, Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, England, Australia, uh, 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 Brazil, Mexico. Come on, church of the living God. This is the time where we realize what we can do. We are blind eye openers. My God, we are COVID-19 healing giants. In the name of Jesus, don't forget who you are, church of the living God, because there's a virus, because things are going differently. You are here to make a difference. Don't let your lamp go out at night. Pray until something happens. This is how we fight our battles. I don't know about you, but I know how to fight with tears coming down my face and crying out to God. I know how to fight by loving the unlovable. This is how we win our battles. Oh my God, we win our battles when we pray that God, we come against the spirit of abortion. God, we stand over this country and we tell that spirit as the gatekeepers, you shall not pass Come on, gatekeepers, don't sit in the corner and let the government decide what happens in your nation. You stand as a gatekeeper and you say, as long as I am alive, you will not come into my territory. Oh, I've come to remind the church today that you are here as the bride to clothe, my God, the church of its nakedness. Remember, you are here to make us shine. Take on the garment of praise. Take on uh, uh, and remove it for the spirit of heaviness. You are here to cover the church when she embarrasses herself on national television, on social media. Come on, bride, clothe her up because when they laugh at them, they're laughing at you and me. Oh, come on, bride, I'm reminding you that you, I'm calling forth your gifts. I'm calling forth your talents. The Bible says she supplies the merchants. We are going to supply Hollywood with actors. Come on. We are going to supply the fashion industry. Oh my God. With the materials because it's our godly designs. We are going to supply education with the material. My God. Because we are the remnant educators. We have the truth in the the name of the living God get involved get involved you let the enemy know not on my watch not on my watch you be David who said to the, the, the uh, who said to Goliath how dare you defy the armies of the living God who do you think you are David wasn't saying no because not Saul has got a problem and my brothers they did this and so you know what they deserve it uh-uh anytime somebody comes against the church come on you gotta get that position of you to, you have to go through me first if you think that you're gonna get to the church I'm the gatekeeper for my city I'm the gatekeeper for my home I'm the gatekeeper for my territory we're gonna change this world we're going to change this world by our impact in the home we're going to change this world by our impact at the gates Holy Spirit we thank you today Holy Spirit we thank you today that mighty God your wisdom and your inspiration has made us go higher and father god i want to ask that this word be a seed that is planted in every heart so that god all it becomes is a seed that you water so that more grows more revelation deeper analogies wiser examples god i've come here today god as the one to be the conduit your word says that you give seed to the sower so i've come here today god to be that conduit that's taking your seed and giving it to these your people the sower let them plant it protect it god let it be in good soil 
that Lord, whatever the remnant is doing, God, I pray this word has been an encouragement to the remnant who still has her sword out. And that God, it has been provoking to those who have been silent. Father, uh, for those who are on here and you don't know the Lord, I just want us to pray together and ask Jesus to come into your heart because that's how you get to be part of this dynamic church of the living God. Father, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I ask you to come into my heart today. I confess with my mouth and with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. I give my life to you to be lived for your glory. In Jesus' name. Father, bless each home. God, may we be examples of what our homes ought to be. Father, may it be contagious that our neighbors say, I see how you love each other. I see how you treat your wife. I see how you treat your husband. I see how you treat your children, and I want that. God, empower us, Heavenly Father, to be true ambassadors of the kingdom of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God say amen and amen. Thank you everybody for joining me this morning. Do me a favor and share this video for Kingdom Dominion Church International all the way in Boston, Massachusetts under the leadership of Reverend Cornelius and Reverend Margaret Masua. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, shalom, shalom. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I love you, Lady Cheswa, Pastor Linda, uh, <clears throat> Evangelist Margaret, and all the others who have been on here. God bless you. I salute you and shalom, shalom.